listening. I will get started by saying that all of the responses that you share with us in any format during today's event will all be captured and put into a single document that we will share on the events page for all of today's participants. So you will have access to all this rich information. I do want to also draw your attention, if you look over on the left-hand side just below Jose's picture, there are a couple of documents there that you might want to download. You can download them straight from the room. One is actually this presentation. And if you're like me and you like to take notes right on the presentation, there's a way to do it for you. Those are over on the left-hand side, so please feel free to download those. Okay, it is my pleasure to introduce Jose Bowen. Jose is the Dean of the Meadows School at Southern Methodist University. Jose has taught at Stanford and Georgetown, and he has written over 100 scholarly articles and edited the Cambridge Companion to Conducting. Jose has appeared as a musician in Europe, Africa, the Middle East, and the U.S. with Stan Getz, Bobby McFerrin, and others. Uh, let's start with three key ideas uh, I always want to remind people about. Um, the first is that you know, in all of our troubles and all of the, 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 the hype about MOOCs and all of our, our concern about finances, a lot of which is justified, um, the good news is that the value of a res residential education or a physical education um, is faculty interaction. That, that the reason people drive to campus, pay for parking, uh, heat buildings, uh, buy chalk, all of that uh, is so that faculty and students can meet face to face um, or have other kinds of faculty interaction. That's, that's the value of what we do. Um, so to me, the, the founding principle is we want to maximize that. But what I want to focus on today are ways that you can use email as a teaching technique. And when I say email, I mean some form of e-communication. So again, we'll come back to the various channels. You, know, you could use Twitter or text or Facebook or you know, a number of other kinds of things. Uh, again, a website for the course. Um, but you need to have some kind of channel, and we'll talk about the, the which types later. So. Uh, there are lots of different ways. Let me hear what you're doing. So there's a, there's a, a chat window coming up. Um, I'd like to hear if you use uh, virtual office hours. Uh, and if you do, um, what are some of the things that you do and how does it work? So if you've got a great technique that you use, please share it so we can all see it. If you have a question, that's OK, too. Yeah, and, and you know the Google Hangout. Also, the whole Google universe works, especially if you have Google email. Um, I am interested in hearing from people about about take up because I hear very different things about this. You know, on a commuter campus, uh, I think people have had better initial response. Um, as much as students want this, and I'll show you some some data on this, um, it is new, right? You know, students are still learning the system. Um, I will tell you that that students often say. Uh, especially first-generation students, um, that office hours are the scariest place on the planet. I use Facebook as my profile, but I don't friend students. Um, I just I use uh, I use a group, but I so I, they, I post myself so they can see one picture of me, but they can't see the the rest of the uh, infinitely funny cat videos that I post. Just kidding. Um, so here's, some, here's an example. And if you look in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see there's a sample e-communication policy there. Uh, so you can download that. You can, you can open it up. Um, these are just some ideas. But for most people, um, there is lots of stuff. So if you found another site I didn't mention, I'm, I'd love to learn about what else you're using. Um, go ahead and, and type it in. Let us know. Um, So and yeah, there are. We're also, you know, um, we're at a point where, you know, who owns this is interesting. Um, you know, so so stuff may not always be available. Um, one thing I didn't show you, but maybe the best thing on the web is the the, the video of the string theory to Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, and it's he's it's a some physics graduate student with way way too much time on his hands. Um, Re-recorded, and he can sing too. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, only he changed all the lyrics, so uh, it's about string theory. Um, yes, TED videos are great, NPR, PBS, these are all great. 
uh, other, other tools. Uh, and lots of universities. Also, lots of retired faculty. Uh, lots and lots of retired faculty. We know 30 years of, of teaching poli-sci um, or anthropology 101. And they've put all of their stuff online, um, their videos, their handouts, their tests, um, et cetera. So you, you start with some content. You send them out of content. You've got e-communication. Say, hey, everybody, I need you to watch the video before you come to class. And I, I know, they don't read their email. So I get an exam before every class. Uh, I use my LMS. I use Blackboard. But there are plenty of other systems that work uh, just as well or even better. Um, and I give them short exams. We'll talk about how that works in a minute. Um, but this allows me to I create more class time, because I'm not testing them in class as much. Um, they're fast. They're auto-graded in my LMS. Um, and they improve student preparation. So the first day of class, my recommendation is don't pass out a syllabus. Right? Uh, I, what I do is I say, hi, welcome to class. I really want to get right in doing something interesting. Um, so I'm going to send you the syllabus in an email in an hour. Or I'm going to post the syllabus online in an hour. Or I'm going to put the syllabus on Blackboard, and I'll, but I'll post it in an hour. Don't post it now, because then they'll all go check it now. Um, and by the way, there's a quiz on the syllabus that's due before the next class. And this will be our standard operating procedure. There will be a quiz before every class. It's due an hour before class, which means you have to get in there and get it done early. Um, and then that gives me some feedback. All right. So, um, and I find this works in, in, in the very largest, largest classes. This is the, the whole point is that you don't have to have, I don't have to grade these. Um, so let's take one of these. So let's, let's bring in the, uh, the we're going to vote on something here. So this is actually, um, so OK, welcome to my jazz history class. Um, the syllabus will be emailed to you in an hour. Um, and I want you to go take the syllabus quiz before the next class. Um, so the question is, which one of these is not a course learning outcome? And so I'd like you to vote here. Um, on this. So um, the fun thing about this is we can do this, we can do this live. Um, so again, I don't know how you cheat on this. And so if you go to my syllabus, you could actually find out which is the right answer. Um, but notice that if you design this well, uh, so fall in love, which is, a, which is getting a lot of votes, um, is actually a course learning goal in my course. Um, I know it'll start getting a lot fewer votes now. Uh, but fall in love is a learning goal. Because think about, remember I said learning is about change, right? So if if learning is about change, you have to know that you can change. You have to have you know, what Carol Dweck at Stanford calls a growth mindset. Right? So a growth mindset means you can learn to like something or love something you didn't know you even knew about. Right? So fall in love is the first stage. You have to be able to say, wait, I, didn't, I never even heard of Thelonious Monk, and now I, I couldn't live without Thelonious Monk. I changed. So I actually want my students to think about change so fall in love is actually a learning outcome in my course. All right, so um, question authority. Um, actually, question authority is also one of my learning outcomes. Um, because, and I'll tell you on the, on this, in the syllabus, say, well, here's what's on the final. Okay? So the final exam is as follows. I would like you to mention, to, to list eight of the 12 or 14 genres we're going to talk about this semester. And for each genre, I would like you to pose one new question that has not yet been asked by scholars of this field. So you can write down bebop, and you can say, well, um, no one has ever done a taxonomy of bebop saxophonists by shoe size. And I will say, yes, that's a new question. But it's not a very good question. It's not a better question. And yes, that's my judgment. Um, but in fact, that's one of the points of the course. Um, so yes, argue in different modes of discourse. Oh, sorry, that is also a course learning goal. Um, because there are different ways of arguing. Remember all those questions about, is, is, and I'm going to ask you, is so-and-so, is Duke Ellington, which of the following true statements are reasons why Duke Ellington is important to the history of jazz? And I'll list a bunch of true things. And then you have to figure out which ones are the most important. Um, and then I might ask you the same as to statements, which is a fact. So Duke Ellington did play at the Cotton Club. That's a fact. Duke Ellington was cool. Well, that's an opinion. Uh, but Duke Ellington was interested in, in musical timbres and textures. Um, that's, a, that's a judgment. Um, so I, you know, I, I'm going to ask them lots of those courses so they're thinking about discourse. 
Uh, so actually, number two, determine the role of jazz in American politics is actually the correct answer here. I'll note that. Um, oh, look, more people are getting it. So 33% are getting it. Um, but the point is that most of you would have had to go look at the syllabus. So yes, the other ones are all learning, learning outcomes. Those are my learning outcomes. New technologies change things. But the good news is thinking is more important than ever. And so that's what we do. We teach thinking. And so as long as we're doing that, we're going to be in business. Sausage making and content, not so much. There are free versions of that. That means that course design just became more important. That course design isn't just a series of topics. It's a series of learning environments. It's a series of experiments about how do I set up activities so students will get feedback, will learn, will advance their mental models. And all this means that integration is more important, that what happens over different years is important. And just having students mixed up in classes, getting content, is, is not going to be as effective. This is actually not the workshop we're going to do today, but next time, uh, if you join us, we'll talk. Now that you have students that are prepared, what else would you do? And so this is my list of some, some initial ideas of some things you might think about um, that you could do in class um, when you're not having to deliver content. And these are probably things that you want to do, They're probably things that your students uh, would benefit from and would deepen their learning experience. But designing these in-class experiences is really what we're going to get paid to do as we move forward. So the question about podcasts, um, the, you know, if, if somebody else has done it, my view is don't do it again. Uh, you know, if, there's, if there's easier content for somebody else, you know, use somebody else's content. Um, but podcasts, students do kind of like hearing from you. And if, again, you've got a unique concept um, or you know, a unique way of explaining something, um, and I would give those away. Um, but, but to do something short, I, I wouldn't implement all of this at once also. Um, you know, I would not do quizzes every day, podcasts. You know, I would do this gradually. This, this life is too short. Uh, you know, you'll kill yourself trying to do it all. Um, so, but I would do one quiz before you know, a, a class coming up and, and maybe push out a video, a short video, you know, not an hour video. And then give yourself 10 more minutes in class uh, to do something else, to play a game, uh, to do something more active in class. Um, students will initially think, ah, that's kind of weird. Uh, but then you just keep doing it. 